Alright guys, today we're talking about how me and Jules met and then we're actually gonna break down how we built the whole team. Now there's about 12, 13 barbers and we're gonna break down how each barber became a compound cutter. So let's start with me and your story. Back in 2016, I met Alec at a, a little neighborhood barber shop in the north side. He was just coming in as a young guy wanting to learn how to cut hair and started asking me a bunch of questions while I was getting giving him his haircut. Funny story actually, I walked in, there's only three guys waiting and there's about five barbers so i'm like okay i'm probably gonna be the next guy i ended up having to wait two hours because of those three guys I actually all waited for jules yeah i was actually on break during work at the time i was doing landscape but yeah mm -hmm. i met him and then eventually he kept coming back and i noticed that he was really he was really hungry for uh, learning to be a barber and at one point we had an opening at that barber shop because i was going away for a month for a vacation and my old boss alex at the time mm -hmm. He wanted me to find someone to replace me while I'm away for some time and that's when I thought Alec was going to be a really good fit to take over my clients and yeah, same I, I time. got him on board on the team there. At the same time too, Blue got hired at that same shop. So me and Blue met Jules at a barber meet that we had. So at this time, he was cutting Alex's. They hosted a barber meet. Who hosted that anyway? I'm not sure. But it was like uh, the OGs of Edmonton barbering. We all met up there. Me, Blue met for the first time there. So this was in 2016. It was a barber meet that we met. That's why I I really wanted to do a barber meet here too just because that's where me and Blue met up. Mm -hmm. So when he went on vacation, Blue actually started with me. So me and Blue started at Alex's Barbershop at the same time. And it was at that time that I was already planning on starting this team and kind of handpicking who we want to work with us, right? Yeah. Eventually, after a few months after that, we met Mama Faye through another barber meet. I believe this was, this was a the, competition. Um, yeah, barber competition. Yeah. I met Mama Faye there and up to her, started talking and then, you know, I thought she would be a good fit for the team too and that was kind of like the beginnings of the team that we were building already yeah and around 2019 is when Alec and I decided to open up compound cut Club. and then that's when Blue and Mama Faye came through too so our starting team was us four from the old shop and Arthur. so Arthur has been my client since day one before he became a barber pretty much he was watching me cut hair for free so this was back in 2016 and then he asked me why are you a barber why are you doing this for free and then I just told him oh it's fun it's my passion this and that and he got inspired by my story and he actually tried to become a barber from there um, I landed in my clippers at the time his very first clipper was from me he learned how to cut hair through that clipper and then when we opened the shop he was working for another friend but um, he just came in here took a look around before we even opened during renovation and then he picked his spot the same spot he's still working at today um, he picked it before and, and before mine art uh, and blue and you Thank before you. you before you even came in yeah, Arthur came in here during construction, called his spot and said, I'm working there. Initially, he wanted to give it a couple months, but when he saw this space, he's like, nah, I'm gonna start right <laughs> right after. Uh, and then also Cam's was pretty much grand opening too. Oh yeah. Pretty yeah. close grand opening. Yeah, Camille is our, our hairstylist here and um, we brought her to the team when she came over during the grand opening. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Yeah, and brought her on. She's, she was pretty much heading the, the main hairstylist and colorist uh, services here at Compound. After that, it would be, yeah, oh, yeah. Pao. Um, so we opened around, we officially opened in August, but we were cutting what you like. Paolo, I seen with his motion, with the way he cuts hair, he has the he has the good hand for it, but his haircuts weren't turning out good. So I told him to come shadow. During this time, he, he was just cutting his friends, but he had the technique like pretty well. It's just his haircuts, he just needed a little bit of uh, guidance. Told him to come do a few haircuts on the mannequin, told him to come shadow, then started coming every day from there. I knew his haircuts were gonna improve quick, just because he had, you know, he had the good hand for it. He just needed the eye. And um, yeah, a few months later, he's already, you know, getting clientele. So yeah, Paolo was our old time client though. Like me and Jules and Blue would cut him way back mm -hmm. at the old shop. We knew him from basketball. Yeah, he would come in every day and he would uh, help out without us asking. He was basically volunteering with us. Yeah. And that's pretty much what, uh, that's pretty much all I needed to know to know that, you know, he'd be a good fit for the team. Yeah. He'd run himself in and get that drive. And so yeah, that's Pao. The next person would be, yeah, I think it's Pat. So Pat became almost a year later. Funny story, he was already working at a different shop, but um, his mom and my mom actually worked together. And his mom told my mom, oh yeah, he's looking for another spot to work at. And then I, I told my mom to tell his mom, <laughs> 
to yeah, DM me on Instagram. We'll go meet this and that, come in for an uh, interview. I already knew him from way back when he was cutting his homies at his high school. Oh, Pat, Pat cuts my hair. Some of my clients would go to him, they go to me. So I, I knew him from way back and his haircut's already up there. Pretty good already. It's just, yeah, he wasn't happy where he was working at. I got to know him, super cool dude. He fit in with the team right away. That's pretty much our main criteria when, when looking at somebody, it's not even the skills. It's how well are they gonna fit in team the vibe the culture and the culture yeah and um, he definitely had that right off the bat he plays basketball and you know we all play ball and I think at first Pau and Pat were like like this right away <laughs> yeah, they hit it off quick. but yeah so that's how we found out about Pat and he's also like a way kept, kept improving he kept yeah. improving the more he was here and the standards were the haircuts were higher and yeah. his skills the phase were getting better his scissors are amazing now and yeah and now he's more and uh, same time, we also hired Dennis. Oh, yeah. So they're pretty much the same time, same same skill level. So Dennis is a similar story to Arthur. Started cutting him before he was even a barber. If you go to his personal Instagram, you can see the haircut I gave him for his grad. That was the very first haircut I gave him. That was back at Alex's. I remember he would walk to it, to that barber shop. So he, he lived close to Alex's barber shop. But yeah, in the beginning, he told me, oh, I'm cutting hair in my garage. I'm cutting hair in this and that. But his dad didn't want him to cut hair. I remember he was cutting a client and then mid cut, his dad kicked him out. Him and his client. Really? Yeah, he told me about that story. It made me sad. <laughs> but then uh, his dad really wanted him to finish school. And actually, that's what he did. So in the two years of him cutting hair, um, he still had to go finish engineering. But he still built up his clientele during that time. And then right after he graduated engineering, he hit me up. He's like, yo. Or I think I hit him up because I knew that was his main goal at the time. But after that, I knew that he was a good barber. So yeah, he still wanted to become a, a barber even though he's finished his engineering job. He could easily go get an engineering job, but he said that's not his passion. But his passion is barbering. He's been killing it. He's pretty much fully booked all the time now too. Very long, exact same story. I've been cutting him since he was in grade eight and I was cutting him for free in his basement, not even my own basement. I was cutting him in his basement because I didn't even have a setup yet. So I was friends with his uh, big brother. Me and him went to high school together. And then when I would cut his big brother, I would cut him too. And yeah, he went through junior high and then went through high school getting cuts by me. And and then he got started with barbering in the team locker room for his basketball team. So he was giving them cuts. I think he got inspired by me and the other barbers here to start cutting hair. Um, I don't know, it's just like, it's like the cool thing to do nowadays in the, in the youngins in high school. Like, oh, I'm a barber. It looks cool on TikTok. You know, everyone seems like they're making money using barbering. But he actually took it to the next level, took it seriously, you know, got into the shop, got into compound. Yeah, he's building up clientele very professional and he's not it's not just like a side hustle for him he's actually trying to make this his career he's trying to go places with this but yeah a lot of really proud of Raylon man mm -hmm. he specializes in curly hair because he has curly hair himself and he has a lot of um, afro hair clients too seen a lot of growth with that guy we forgot about Tracy <laughs> <laughs> before TJ before Raylon. is what it before Raylon? 2021 we did that on purpose just for last <laughs> <laughs> and the worst for last. Just kidding. So Fifi was working here before. Fifi was one of our stylists before and she was doing Tracy's hair. And um, we're happy for Fifi. She's now at her dream salon that she's working at now. But we saw that she was doing Tracy and I was like, oh, she's a hairstylist too. And definitely she's a younger hairstylist. So it's a younger crowd. So it's a whole different clientele that we can tap separate, into. Separate network. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, the young and they like their hair done and all that. And in that younger group, there's nobody really popped off yet. We definitely saw the potential in Tracy doing that. And yeah, we took her in for an interview. It was a very hard decision for us. I don't know. <laughs> it was a lot of things we had to keep Go in mind. Back and forth with, yeah. yeah, and eventually we brought her into the team. Yeah, eventually we did. She was being taught with Camille and Mama Faye, and she was learning really quick. And yeah, and she actually became like, booked up really quickly and yeah we're super proud of that um, yeah, super proud work. of how the team would come to get together and teach each other and I think you know that's a part of the culture that we're looking for here and yeah, she clicked with the team too right <laughs> um, she just hates a few people here but other than that yes yeah, chill I think that's everybody for now we have 13 chairs we have 12 barbers so if you want to be the last spot we might have to make a new video for you <laughs> 
but that's how we built the team. What's the goal of Compound? To give passionate barbers and stylists the best environment they can be in to thrive, be successful, to build their clientele and, you know, to give them the dream job that they want. Yeah, literally when hiring these other barbers, they tried barbering in different shops before but like didn't feel like going to work, they weren't happy doing it and barbering shouldn't be like that. It should be happy, you know, you go into work, you're excited and hopefully with this space, you know, with the right vibe, the right environment, the right clientele, people look forward to going to work to doing here eventually won't be looked down to. That's it. I'll see y'all in the next video.